Hi, I'm Morgan. I am the uh, PTL of Keystone and I've worked with OpenStack for three years now or something like that. Uh, both deploying, writing code, all sorts of stuff. I, as you can see, work for a uh, you know one of those Silicon Valley companies. What does PTL stand? Uh, pro, uh, project team lead. What, is that the is that the correct? Thanks One for today. <laughs> I think I, we've changed it a couple times, so I can't even remember which one it is. Uh, but I, my job is to make sure that everybody plays nice when contributing code to Keystone, make sure we get everything in line, get it out the door. Hopefully not too many security problems with it, that type of stuff. Uh, HP primarily pays me to continue to do that and make it, the community better and to help them be better at uh, utilizing it and making sure that we get everything both internal and external uh, updated and working uh, working properly. So initiatives both from both sides work out and I spend a good amount of time talking to all the operators out there. I may have seen you around, maybe not. Always happy to come talk. So what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we have a common language that we've been using for a while and it's metaphor that's used for how you manage your servers, especially in context of cloud. It's the cattle versus pets model, I guess is how you would put it. So we'll talk what are cattle in this context, what are pets, why does it matter, what, what's cloud native, and why does it make a difference, why is it hard, and is there, better, is there a better metaphor to use? Well, cattle's great. It, we, have a, we have a whole industry based around Scaling out the uh, scaling out the number of you know having cattle for beef for for food for creating um, uh, dairy products all that type of stuff, but why do we pick cattle? Well, it was an easy industry. We've scaled up massively as well United States in the United States and other places. They do all sorts of things to grow more beef for people. Well, except for we could have also standardized our language around anything. We could have called it zebras, in you know, but. Cattle was an easy thing to talk about. We know how it is. You have a whole bunch of them, grow them, and all those types of stuff. The question now comes to when you're deploying your servers. You want to have uh, you want you want to have something you can talk about from a business standpoint, or for, to your business from both the DevOps from the business standpoint from the developer standpoint. How am I going to manage? all of the servers in a way that makes sense, takes the load off the DevOps team, makes sure that the developers have all the tools that they need. Well, we said, we'll call them all cattle, we'll make them very similar, deploy them with all the tools that you have, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, homegrown stuff. And the goal is to make sure that everything's reproducible. Well, you know, some organizations manage to do that, and other organizations tend to uh, just not name their stuff and pretend that it works like cattle. So what are the clear points that make, some, make a deployment work in this metaphor? Well, cattle, give your servers numbers. And I know you've mostly heard this before. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 24, 10, whatever it is. Web servers are all the same. Why do you have one called, you know, Fido and one called, you know, Moo Cow. I don't know. It just doesn't matter. You want to have them all the same. You want to be able to make sure that they are short of the very minor changes that allow them to get on the network, functionally easy to look at and go, oh, I see what the differences are if something goes wrong because it's out of spec. Servers are identical. And if one gets sick, well, you're supposed to just be able to replace it. However, there's this, you know, slight problem with that. Everybody wants their servers to be faster. Everybody wants their applications be faster. Every developer says, I can make it faster. So maybe we should be using racehorses, right? They're fast. Cows also, funny enough, have real value. When a cow gets sick, you don't just take it out back and get rid of it and go make a new one. No, they're, you would take, try and take care of the cow. You may not put as much effort into taking care of the cow as you may other, you know, otherwise, but this. Now, what happens when a racehorse lames itself? Oh, you, you know, it, <laughs> yeah, that may, maybe we should maybe we should stop here. This this is not this doesn't work either. So, what are pets besides this awesome dog that right here? 
You give the pets names. They are yours. You, you help them grow. You take care of them. They become part of the family. When they get sick, I mean, have you looked at vet bills? <laughs> Spend a lot of money getting them back to health. And sometimes you keep spending a lot of money getting them back to health. But it's because they're part of your family. Why, is your ser why are your servers part of your family? <laughs> yes, you did. And as part of what are pets, I mean, as an example, what are legacy apps? Legacy apps, that's when we're talking about moving a legacy app to the cloud. Your legacy apps, that tends to be exactly what your pets end up being in your infrastructure. So, you know, they're not cloud native. We'll come back to what that means a little, in a few minutes here. They make your DevOps team cry, especially in the middle of the night. Anybody here have a pager? <laughs> they're always, always, always mission critical for somebody. And they're never a priority for new development. Well, that doesn't seem like it's a lot of fun to work with, but you can't get rid of them. So why is cloud native difficult? What is cloud native? Well, if you've seen Monty Taylor's speak, uh, speeches on OpenSec Infra, among many other people, you have this great service. Does everything for OpenSec. We check all of the patches that get uploaded. We text, check, um, in fact, twice. Once when you upload them and once right before you merge them. And as you can see by the diagram here, and this is definitely out of date, it's really complex. But nobody can say it isn't the poster child for a cloud-native service. It runs across multiple public clouds. It manages resources on demand. It crosses all sorts, of all sorts of different functional use cases and provides a service to a community in an extremely, extremely beneficial way. I mean, we would not have OpenStack today without this architecture and this infrastructure. However, if you look real closely at it, there's still some pets in there. Well, or at least named cattle. I mean, maybe you have a one cow farm and it is part of your family. But you look at, you have the Zool service. Zool is manages what goes, in, you know, handles the task, the, the delegating the tasks out to the Jenkins servers so that it knows what's going on. Help make sure that everything is aware of, uh, you know, parsing out the, the when I upload a patch, make sure it gets handed out to a Jenkins server, gets the results back, publishes those results in a way through Garrett. Well, there's one Zool. There could be more than one. The architecture doesn't prevent it. But at a certain point, what's the value of having many of these, scaling them up as needed, scaling them down? Another case, look at NodePool. NodePool is fantastic. Again, we, for the most part, have one. That may be changing. That may have changed since last time I looked. But when you have five of them, what happens when it goes wrong? Well, instead of having one server doing something weird and producing a whole bunch of useless VMs for you, you have five of them. <laughs> most of the problems are not the service going away or having interruptions at this point. Most of the problems are we introduced a little bit of bad code in edge case. Now we have to go and poke it with sharp stick, restart it, take care of it, make sure we commit those changes into the repo and get it back. Can we spin these back up easily? Absolutely. But there's still these one-off specific cases. There's a diminishing return on going purely cloud native, the pure cattle uh, perspective. You will always have servers that are more important or services that are more important than others. Managing a Git replication, a replicated Git farm is surprisingly difficult, making sure everything stays in sync. Adding a new server to Logstash, ELK, takes time, takes effort. You don't just push a button and it doesn't just magically work. You can get there, but it's a lot more work. It's very difficult. And there's a diminishing return. So sometimes it's just worth having servers that you are understanding are more important than others and take longer to recover from if they go out. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, and then if you, uh, but then you have all of, these, all of these tools that I'm sure they are working on that. But you have all these tools that, are, um, that, that you know you can recover from if you have an outage or if you want to scale it up. It doesn't take a lot of extra time, but automating it takes more effort than going and fighting the fires you need to right now. Doesn't mean this isn't a cloud native service. 
doesn't mean you can't have a cloud native service with interesting and useful, more important servers than others. So back to those legacy apps. Is it easy to change a deprioritized application? What are the developers going to tell you? They're not working on it? Of course. I mean, they're going to say no. They don't want to spend time going back and working on those legacy apps. They've been deprioritized. So you can't get rid of them, but you can't, you can't get rid of them, you can't make them cloud native. So you, where, do you find the, where do you find the ground, middle ground? You know what they are, you work around them, you bake them so that you can recover if there's an outage. DevOps team cries a lot at night. So let's get down to what is the new metaphor? What's the right answer? How do we describe this workflow that includes more than just well, we can scale up, scale down, and everything's replaceable and throw away. Could we maybe sheep? I mean, it's a flock. You can get herded. You could call. You can call. Uh, you can go get a uh, go get a, col uh, a col border collie. You know, a variety of other dogs. Train them. Puppet chef. Ansible. But what happens when you go to shear your flock? That metaphor seems to fall flat in a few ways as well. Um, Cattle's a little bit more easy to a little bit easier to understand. So we could use crows, but when you only when you start standing it all up, you you get an attempted murder. Let's <laughs> let's just move on. But let's get down to it. What has some high value entities, some easily replaceable or gen and generic entities, and everything is replaceable still, but some are more work to replace than others. Maybe beehive. Well, that's a different argument. <laughs> I, yes, you could replace employees too. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you have a beehive, you have the queen bees, you have the drones, the workers, they have all different functions. Some are more important than others, but everything can be replaced. Maybe this is the right one, maybe it's not. But something to think about. So. I'm trying to keep this short, give everybody a little bit of extra time back. But let's stop using the cattle metaphor. We have happier cows, and as the, that TV ad goes, you know, it makes for ha you know, what happy cows do. You do need to embrace the mixture of high value and easily replaceable. Does not mean that high value isn't easy repla easily replaceable. Oftentimes, high value is harder to replace. And keep encouraging the move to cloud native. Make sure that everybody is thinking about how to keep their applications working and be fully um, replaceable, low surface areas for faults, and that don't just take out everything all at once. But in the cases where you can't, orchestrate around them, make sure, everybody that, make sure everybody's aware of it. Thank you. <laughs>